All right, everybody, I am back. And finally, 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 we are going to start painting. We are going to try and get a video uploaded that has to deal with how every man paints his miniatures. Hey, everybody, this is Every Man with Every Man's 40K channel. And yes, yes, we're going to finally try to put together a painting video. In order to do that, I want to do this first, okay? I'm going to baseline all my tools and uh, basically all my mediums that I use, okay? But anyway, let's run through this. I want to run through this real quick. This video is going to be the first of a series of videos. We're going to make a little folder in my YouTube channel where I'm going to start sticking a whole bunch of these little videos of, of how to paint and doing some technique work, okay? So let's start with the big ticket item in the back. As you can see, I've got a Timber Tech air compressor and I've been waiting for this to come in before I can get all this started, okay? Uh, this is the $85.99 Amazon.com special, okay? Um, great, great compressor. Uh, go online, go to other people's channels. You'll see great reviews on this compressor super quiet and I mean super quiet okay then we're gonna go with the airbrush okay this airbrush here it's a master airbrush this again this is the Walmart special okay uh, this was the one that I think is like $39.99 it comes with a 0.2 a 0.3 and a 0.5 uh, needle it has all the settings double action right if, again if you've done airbrushing the double action right here so double action it's ready to go this is a good airbrush don't let the $39.99 uh, price tag dissuade you from picking this up it is fantastic airbrush okay let me put it here so I don't want to drop it that's the last thing you want to do okay so now uh, here I just want to explain all my paints I use everything under the sun and literally everything under the sun there is there's I use inks as you can see back here uh, every painter you're gonna want inks you gotta go to the inks they are super rich in color so then I got my I also use these right as you can see these are my speed paints so sometimes I'll use speed paints I kind of use those more as a wash to shift colors I got pro krill or pro acryl right these colors right here the reason i'm showing you these colors is this is kind of the palette that we're going to go with when painting uh this corn berserker and you and this is yeah it's going to be crazy once we get into the colors so here we have some home depot paint uh, no matter what do not let anybody tell you that you cannot paint with home depot paint okay it, it this is uh the same stuff that's in here okay yeah a little bit of different formulation but it's all acrylic it is all uh, basically colorant that is floated in a medium okay my brushes as you can see here I got a ton of haggard up brushes a lot of these brushes I just grab them and start using them um, I have some good synthetics in here but I also have stuff that it's only good for terrain like hundred percent terrain that's it like these hard bristle brushes dry brush and terrain like rocks for example when I get ready to do something like this right we'll come in here and we'll use these more aggressive cheap uh, hard bristle brushes okay so again brushes this brush here dry brush this is a makeup brush coming out of uh, Walmart go buy a pack of this right here so I do use speed paints as you can see over here right these are speed paints. Typically, I use these as more of like the old school washes that Games Workshop used to have. And in fact, I have some old washes from the 90s. I, I mean, I, you can't even get these anymore. I, I, I mean, I don't think, but this is like the like old. If I was to check the dates on here, I, I bet you they say like 98, 2000. I mean, these are so old. They've got to be 20 years old and they still have color in there. They still work. I got oils, okay, back here. Um, every painter, you gotta have oils in black to wash, and you gotta use your most common wash for brown is gonna be your burnt umber. So not only do I have burnt umber 
in oil, but I have burnt umber. If you come in here and look, right? Burnt umber in ink. It is one of the best colors to use on washing anything from, uh, especially whites. If you're into whites, flesh colors, flesh tones, you gotta go burnt umber. Okay, uh, mineral spirits, that's cheap. Um, Home Depot special mineral, mineral spirits, uh, like $5 for the, that whole can there. Uh, not the expensive stuff that you get from the hobby stores. Over in the corner, right, right hand side, brushes. Cheap, I think those are like $2.50 for a pack or maybe like $5 for a pack, all synthetic. But as long as I can get through one miniature with one brush without the tip curling and totally getting all disgusted, um, I'm fine. I can, I can buy, I can keep buying these every day of the week, uh, $2.50 a pack or $5 a pack and just toss them away at, when I'm done using them as long as I can get through these miniatures. And you'll see, um, those are actually really good. I mean, yeah, hard to explain, but they're really good. Uh, and then finally, you can tell here that I have Liquitex. So not only do I use already pre-mixed or pre-reduced uh, uh, paints, okay, and inks, but I also use what they call heavy body paints. And I got a ton of these right over here on the left-hand side on the floor in the paint room here. Uh, you, you can't imagine how many tubes of this stuff I have. These are Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby to give you an idea. I got uh, 25 of these tubes. It was on sale. It was a $50 set, okay? But it was on sale, half off. So I paid like $25.99 for 25 different colors of these tubes. And a lot of stuff that you guys have seen online, me painting on my channel, I've been painting with that stuff. So again, so finally, okay, we're gonna talk about priming. I prime using rattle cans. Some people choose not to, some people like to do it. I, again, my technique of priming, I don't have dusting, okay? There is a technique that you can use to prime where you can get primer to lay down super smooth. This model in front of you, okay, we're gonna talk about priming and why we prime. This model in front of you, I've primed twice. I primed the legs black, okay? I primed underneath black, under here. And then I think that's it, okay? Then over the black, okay, I went in here with the Rust-Oleum khaki, a flat, super, super flat. Let me bring this in here so you guys can see if some of that can pick that up. But look at that surface. I mean, you cannot tell me that that surface is not laid down smooth in order for me to get a great finish and a great paint job out of there. Just with rattle can primer. I mean, look at that skull. I mean, look how smooth that is. Okay, so you don't need to prime using an airbrush. I am not saying that you can't, right? But again, you do what you want to do. I've just learned that, I mean, I got a technique, it works. I, I mean, I go with what works, right? Okay, so, oh, uh, lastly, why we prime? I want to, so we're going to, this is kind of going to wrap this up. There's two main reasons why I think you should prime, okay? And, and I like to use rattle can for a very specific reason. One is when I'm converting miniatures, I'm working with different substrate materials, okay? Different, all kinds of different stuff. I've got metal chains, I've got resin, 3D printed model. I've got plastic from GW. Um, again, resin 3D printed. This one is from Epicast. If anybody who's an old, old veteran, these skulls were some dude that was running around California back in the 90s doing Epicast stuff, okay? So I have all kinds of craziness going on. 
Well, what I want to do is I want to prime to a like substrate or a like material. Priming does that, okay? It, it gives me a coat and it gives a surface for the paint to stick to, a porous surface. So now I'm not dealing with different substrates. Oh, I also have MDF wood or like paper because I built these by hand scratch, okay? So this material is not even like the rest. So you want to prime because you want to level set or, or take out any conditions that will mess with your paint material wise. So another reason why you want to prime is let me grab a miniature back here that I got hiding that I want to show you guys. Okay, another reason why you want to prime is you see all the different colors. So again, metal, plastic, white, black, tan, okay, gray. You don't want any of your off colors or differing colors to read, okay? It's called R-E-A-D. You don't want it to read through your paints or to change the color of your paints. So if I was to paint a certain red over this white, I'm going to get a totally different red look at the finish than I would painting the same red over a black. And then finally, I covered this a little bit, um, adhesion, okay? Flat primers, okay, have, they're porous, okay? They have what we call some, some bite or some grit to them, okay? So it allows the paint in which you're gonna top coat these to stick or adhere, as well as solvent-based primers have what they call like etching compounds. So as you prime using chemical sort of can based primers, they etch and they adhere to your substrate or your material. So again, that way you just get such, such much better grip, okay? So that's gonna complete this. I wanted to get in and out of here around 10 minutes. I don't know if I've done that. I might be running long. We might be at 15 now. But this is going to be the first video of every man's how to paint, okay? So um, we're gonna go ahead and close this out. We're gonna do that like every video. So hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell and hit that like button because your likes moves this to the top of the list, right? It changes the algorithm. Please tell all your friends on social media that every man 40K dude, that you know, that channel that you guys watch, He's finally going to paint something and put something on YouTube uh, painted, okay? And then, like we always say on every closing, may all your dice rolls come up sixes unless you're looking for that one, people. Peace out, everybody.